Thank you so much, uh, Sigita. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar Inclusive University for Children. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, my name is Luisa. I am assistant professor at the University of Granada, and I will be moderating the session. Uh, today, we have five uh, interesting presentations to explore different initiatives happening in five uh, partner universities. Uh, you will uh, have between 10 and 20 minutes to present your initiative, and then we will uh, have a, a time for any questions that you may have about the, the initiative. And so uh, let's, let's start uh, with the first speaker. Uh, Dr. Dominic Baker from Leipzig University, um, who is going to present the project Climate Solidarities, a proposal for an Arcus Children's University online project. So Dr. Dominic Baker, um, the floor is yours. Hi, hello. Um, I'm very happy to have this opportunity and I will basically eat your ears off because what I'm doing is a sales pitch of a project, not, not so much a, <laughs> a presentation, what we are doing, but it's all work in progress. It's actually the next issue is tomorrow at one o'clock. So you're all invited to come and see how this works out uh, in, in real time. And the project has to grow and pro prosper. So therefore, um, I'm trying to sell it to you and get you involved uh, somehow. Um, in the chat, uh, I have posted uh, the program link, link for the trailer, which most of you have seen already as I send it around in this uh, community. Registration links if you're so inclined. Um, and the link to the platform, which I will show you in a minute, where you're uh, invited to join me there. So it's not so lonely. First, um, well, do I need this presentation? No, actually, let's just directly jump to the platform. Um, so I will share your screen and we do this live. Um, Tum, tum, tum. Screen, green screen, screen share this one. Um, if I'm looking not directly at you, then I have to apologize because I have this on the left hand side. Uh, do you see um, the shared screen, which is kind of the Gather Town um, platform? Yes, yes, we can does see it. it. Does it work? So, okay. Um, I'm logging in there right now without the, um, without the camera. Um, while I'm talking, uh, you see this. Um, this is our virtual conference center <laughs> for an online youth congress on climate change issues called Climate Solidarity. And we use this platform um, well, you see the 8-bit pixel aesthetic um, is a success with uh, young people. I've tried it with students and with my own kids. Uh, they want in the lockdown, they wanted to have classes uh, like this. So it's a platform like any other where you can chat, where you can like Zoom, where you can uh, see each other, get to know each other only with the difference that you have this avatar and you walk around. Uh, so please come and join if you like. Like. It's uh, quite lonely in there right now, and it has a map editor, so we have uh, constructed a virtual conference center uh, where you can actually move around and you can, whatever, like here, you could sit around on the campfire and play the guitar or I don't know, I haven't switched on the sound, now you heard the river or everybody who's in this area would be in a kind of private space or breakout room. Uh, so you get the idea that we have a kind of gamified uh, surface which is suitable for um, pupils, children, young people to meet online. And then there would be right here like a conference program um, where you can see that's kind of a whiteboard where everybody can um, 
share and type, um, we have here the conference program and I want uh, to present quickly the events. You have the events on the homepage if you want to go into detail. Uh, we have four events planned, um, which is um, the first room would be climate uh, action simulation game. Um, we'll go into this room in a second. Then we have a project which is called Literature for School. I hope this uh, interests uh, pe many people here or in teacher education perhaps or um, other things related to literature. It uh, deals with current issues in children's literature and gives you recommendations, uh, classroom material, and it's uh, in English and German, mm, the literature you find here. So probably for English teaching, um, a very valuable uh, tool. And we have a presentation and a workshop around this. The big, biggest workshop is a critical view on sustainable development goals. Um, this will be a, a critical view on smartphones and how their production cycle, what uh, impact does it have on the environment and um, which uh, of the uh, UN SDGs um, can you actually bring in the context with a smartphone, with the help of smartphone and which are in conflict with each other. Um, and the last event, quickly is polar uh, is a polar exposition so you have polar scientists uh, here in Leipzig and they just do like a travel look they, they talk about their um, experiences and get in touch let's jump into one of these rooms uh, you can explore them on your own if you like you go into this kind of teleporter space here press enter and here you see the ambition of it uh, it's quite a, a large room. Um, in this climate interactive game, which simulates actually what happened in Glasgow last week. Um, so it's a UN uh, conference, many people, private space, uh, seats, um, here a stage uh, with speakers, and you have all these individual rooms. And the game, um, it's Climate interact Interactive Org. I recommend this uh, NGO actually. Um, you, can, you can invite them. I know, for example, that in Bergen there have been various of these events already. They're uh, very effective online, but also in kind of summer schools. Um, you divide the audience in groups into groups of stakeholders like the lobbyists for uh, fossil fuel, like the uh, climate activists, like um, we see, for example, over here, what do we have? Um, I think these are the fossil fuels. So we have these small rooms um, go in there. Yes, and this would be the group conventional energies they have their materials here um, which they can use for uh, their kind of group work and the goal is here to simulate a ne negotiation like it happened in glasgow the last week so all these stakeholders and nations they have to come to an agreement and then you put the results into uh, the simulator, which is an online platform and which gives you in real time a graph uh, how this will affect the climate and how many degrees Celsius will be the result of uh, the actions on which you could agree. And tomorrow we will do this with the actual results of Glasgow and probably all be very depressed and crying out loud that uh, what was uh, um, decided there what could be agreed upon was um, not enough to get anywhere uh, that people will not suffer so um, hard times are up ahead for the coming coming generations that's basically what they know but here you can experience this and the science behind the simulation that's one of the um, one of the events i see hello lucia you made it here we could hello <laughs> we could right now talk to each other via this platform but switch it off because it has horrible effects if you have it online with zoom and simultaneously um i see you find it inviting at the buffet <laughs> all right uh, so i hope this is 
only a small impression. I want. To, I don't want to make a publicity for uh, the platform itself, just to give you an impression um, how much, uh, because this all you can modify and it, it can grow with your event. You can live uh, change things there. How here there is a, to my mind, next step in kind of online interactivity and uh, suitable is aesthetic for young people. Mm. Well, I have good experiences with this, but I want to talk about the whole project uh, as such. So I'll stop sharing this and um, you can enter at your own leisure with a password uh, at this platform. And now share a standard PowerPoint presentation, which is this one. Um, should be there. Okay, here we are. Tomorrow, one o'clock, I repeat. It has not been a self-running um, success, so to say, oh, we do something with climate and it's easy and people come. This does happen with real life events. Uh, we have real huge lectures where the biggest uh, lecture hall in Leipzig with 850 seats is not enough to uh, accommodate all the kids who want to uh, who are interested in this topic on the contrary with an online event which has is very ambitious has the ambition to unite children of the very young age um, of the youngest possible age actually um, in an online environment it has been difficult we are now tomorrow in the second iteration of the event it's still work in progress it's a learning core curve <clears throat> and so i present to you a SWOT analysis, what you do strategically if you want to sell a product, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I mean, doing with times, anyone stop me if I uh, go on too long? It's like half time a bit, so I have 10 more minutes, I guess. Um, I'll find, I, I'm sorry if I kind of rattle off these things, but I won't want to really show or get through this. So you can imagine we have planned for around 200 people um, in this uh, format, online format, um, that would be five, uh, up to five simultaneous or four simultaneous events with a real conference feeling with all uh, the things around the meetings in between the uh, more informal parts in this platform. Uh, breaks, summaries, uh, the whole program, as, as you know of a scientific, as you have experienced a scientific conference for children. In this case, we in the first run, we had 10 participants. Tomorrow we'll be around 20, perhaps 25. So it's uh, not, uh, not easy, uh, this target group, and uh, especially with the ambition to have it really internationally. Um, tomorrow we have participants from uh, Philippines to Argentina and lots of Germans, or the most are Germans and some um, Czech Republic. Uh, but uh, by far, I could, I, I would imagine this much more pluralistic uh, in my my world when it once it takes off, so to speak. Um, strength of the formats, not all of them. I've found four um, four ideas: climate and solidarity. Um, climate mega trend, it will stick with us, uh, youth movement, which is um, really dependent on science. Uh, so the whole climate movement is basically the most interested young generation in the result of science because that's their, that's their compass, that's their base for their, the whole movement. Uh, so there's a big base there, strong connections in, in, in the topic. Which, by the way, does not mean that this platform and the concept is not open to other kinds which we could do together, uh, other formats, other uh, um, other contents. It's just my focus, and I find it a very strong one. And looking actually to Bergen uh, a lot uh, with a lot of hope. Let's see what uh, what's happening there, but. All of our institutions are in one way or another uh, dealing with a problem and it basically deals with everybody. Everybody will have to deal with it or does deal with it. Solidarity also um, 
as an international um, format, um, obviously the border crossing solidarities is a strong point. Media support is a strength. I had huge success with the video. Uh, you also, thank you very much. Most of you have shared the video and uh, in your plot networks. The video itself had actually never have never had such a feedback like or such a, a, a range i had 120000 people have seen it um 700 have actually watched the video 70 likes uh, which is enormous uh, for a youtube video uh, on facebook in my experience for example but exactly none of these people have registered for the event. So this is a strength, but media alone doesn't do it. Um, uh, they, two, two, two television or not radio channels have actually called me to, to know more about the event. So there was a huge interest and a huge, um, um, uh, the, it was readily shared with no effect. The border crossing, um, well, that's in, especially in Arcus uh, context, very important uh, strength of this concept. And uh, climate scientists are very enthusiastic people. So despite the failure in terms of uh, participation, they stick with it. And it's really easy to find uh, climate scientists who are willing to share their knowledge, uh, in my experience, as they have also a pressing need to communicate with this generation. So that's very, very nice to work with these people. Weaknesses. It's purely, purely digital. We are all fed up with uh, formats like this and we're running into the next uh, kind of lockdown in some ways or others. And we have learned that a digital only format is not, uh, not feasible. So um, that's actually a weakness that we as of yet do not have a real life context for this. And it's purely in the mind and in the clouds existing. The target group is, as I've seen, as I've said, very difficult to reach, especially uh, um, virtually. Um, they are behind um, various gatekeepers, parents, um, data protection laws, access to uh, certain communication sites, all these things. It's very difficult to reach the direct contact uh, to children across the globe, let's, let's speak. Um, Language barrier is, what is probably the most uh, difficult of these barriers. Um, you have to be confident in your English. Um, and the remote organization, which we all experience, for example, in Arcos um, firsthand, how difficult it is to uh, organize um, without meeting each other. I could not come uh, to the conference, but we see uh, how the feedback is and how reliable things are. So remote organization, if you do not do this on a firm base, is very difficult. But as you do in such a SWOT analysis, those weaknesses, you transform them into opportunities. The purely in a digital um, weakness is actually taken up um, by having a truly interactive format. So this uh, format goes beyond and above what we're doing right now, you sitting there listening to me, um, because the platform in itself allows the interaction and climate activism itself in the real world uh, also um, has in my in my hope at least the, the tendency to connect bet uh, between borders and coordinate uh, for example, the, the global climate strike, coordinate certain dates and moments in real life. So this kind of interaction has to be focused upon. Um, inclusion, uh, the, the advantages of the medium of the, uh, so to say, virtual space for inclusion, I'd like to focus on them a bit as this is the topic of our meeting today. 
um, I see three points where inclusion um, can be furthered uh, with this format. The first is an outreach to regions which we with live events normally would not reach. To me in Saxony, in Germany, would these be the small villages around in the countryside around uh, Leipzig. All the children's universities I know of are in cities. Uh, so um, there is a part of the populace which does not have anything to do with university education and I hope this can be remedied via virtual um, participation which actually as we know that access alone is not enough to to generate inclusion uh, here comes the interactive part um, you have seen the small rooms by, at the site um, as on an event which you can easily cre create in a platform like this. So tutoring, individual um, help uh, or communication, um, for example, of university students with the kids who explain and help making sense of all the things which are happening in the main room can be easily kind of included um, in such a format. So. Um, also here I see a plus point. And if you talk about inclusion in the traditional sense, uh, we had an online streaming with the public television this year um, who had a live a sign interpretation for the events. And this was off-site, this was so. We had a studio on one point and the interpreter was sitting in, in the television studio and the other side of the city. And they did it live in the streaming which means um, that these resources, which are really complicated to organize and costly and everything, may be shared even across borders. We, can, we could have an event and one of us, at one point, we have live interpretation, uh, sign interpretation, and everybody, the whole event can profit it wherever uh, of it, wherever it is. Um, this works for subtitles or language translation as well, where we can share in, could share in resource, resources, everybody does subtitles in his or her language for a, a summary video or something of, of the virtual format, which, uh, and then, um, well, the work is shared and the result is we have a multilingual product, which also patents inclusion. And last, uh, not but not least but most importantly for me is the solidarity aspect in inclusion then if we do it in the european time zone we have the whole of africa so a global aspect uh, solidarity in the sense of including the underprivileged people uh, worldwide yeah luisa you want to interrupt I, me i see um, yeah i'm uh, uh, sorry it's two minutes left yeah. Two minutes. Thank you. So that's the most important point. That's why I'm stopping here because it's inclusion today, the topic. Um, if we transform the language barrier into uh, um, an asset, so to speak, then I would look to English teachers. I want, would want to have this event happening live in classrooms, English classrooms, uh, with environmental project talking to each other across the globe, which gives uh, just another setting for English learning. Um, and in the context of Arcos, this could be a truly international project. Threats would be the amount of existing climate projects. You, you compete for an attention with a lot of very high quality offers. Um, this is by far not enough if we, if we take Glasgow seriously. And um, the threat is that after the first two experiences, I will not continue this project if I do not find strong international partners looking, especially to you in this uh, uh, respect, perhaps we can come together or I could join with this project, a much bigger project, what you are working on already. I'm open to anything, but uh, I'm desperately looking for international partners. So here, the strong point of the presentation was trying to, to focus on the inclusive aspect, uh, outreach, um, traditional inclusion and uh, solidarity as form of sharing knowledge worldwide. And to come to a conclusion, if we look out of Arcus Action Line 2, um, where we are to the whole Arcus project and see what is the idea behind Arcus, then we have building bridges toward a shared future. 
check. This would fit the description. Advancing towards deeper European integration, if we ca can do so pull something like this off together, we are furthering this goal. Respond to grand global societal change challenges. Of course, climate change is exactly that. Educate critically engaged European and global citizens. I am with mm, what's the uh, Herr Krüger from Norway. Absolutely, that was my first um, first intention, my first expectation. Actually, joining Arcus, we do something together for our target audience not for us sitting here we inspire us that's all very nice and i enjoy this and it's very valuable but i want to have a product which fulfills this point critically engaged european citizens that's my target with a children's university scientific literacy on an early age and this could be sustained and uh, participate in the third mission as a deep society and cultural and civic engage engagement. So thank you very much. I want to sell you this product so much and I hope uh, to have some feedback and perhaps with some of you um, to get you on board <laughs> or get, get on your board if you like. <laughs> so that was my rush <laughs> through the whole thing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dominic Decker, for the very interesting uh, presentation, uh, which uh, it's a really, really promising uh, project with many, many applications. Um, if all of you are, are right, uh, we will have time at the end for, for, the, for the questions. If you prefer to wait until the end, or if you or do you prefer to have questions um, right after the presentation, I think it's better to have all the questions at the end to make sure that everyone has time to present the, the project, if you are right. Yeah. Okay, so take notes, please, about any question that you want to, to ask uh, Dominic uh, Baker about the, um, the project at the end. Uh, let's move to, to the uh, next speakers. Um, and the next initiative that is going to be presented is Stalmat Andalusia, a project for, for promoting the mathematical talent. Uh, this project is being uh, developed by professors Rafael Ramirez and Miguel Luis Rodriguez from the University of Granada. I will, I will give the, the word to Professor uh, Miguel Luis Rodriguez. So, Miguel Luis, the floor is yours. You have uh, 20 minutes. Okay, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, let, let me show the screen. Yeah. Mm. The presentation. You can see the presentation? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So first, first of all, thank you for inviting us to this webinar and for giving us the opportunity to talk about this nice project that is Stalmat. This is the, the skin of the, of the presentation, a bit of history, then we present the program, and then a few words of Stalmat in Andalusia. Uh, our alma mater, Miguel de Guzmán, was a key figure in the Spanish mathematics of the 20th century. He was an extraordinary teacher and communicator, and his ideas in mathematical education have had a profound influence on the teaching of mathematics in Spain. As far back as 1995, he thought about the idea of developing a program for talent talented young students. And this is the origin, the very beginning of Estalmat. His description of the program was, With, without doubt, there are in our school communities a number of students endowed with a truly exceptional intellectual gift for mathematics. These are talents that at times will go more or less unnoticed and somewhat ignored. Since it is impossible for the teacher to devote to these people 
the personal attention they require. In this uh, ambient, in 1998, the Spanish Royal Academy of Science decided to start this project in Spain. For practical reasons, the Academy started out with a pilot program in the region of Madrid. In 2003, the program started in Catalonia and in Castilla León. In 2005, Stalmat started in Western Andalusia and the Canary Island. Today, Stalmat has branches in 10 regions of Spain and one more in Ecuador, South America. We would like that this webinar give rise to another branches in Europe. Who knows? We would like to mention that this was not the unique program in the world at that time. Miguel de Guzman had heard about similar programs in Baltimore, the States, and in Hamburg, in Germany. This is the, a picture of the region that has branches of Stalmat in Spain, 10 regions. You can see the, the web page, a lot of, of information. Well, uh, what does Stalmat stand for? Well, you can see, as you can see in the, in the slide, the words Stimulo, Talento, and Mathematicas. I think that there is no need for translation. Uh, the first letters give rise, gave rise the name of Stalmat. The program objective is to detect, stimulate, and guide the talent of mathematically gifted children, aged 12 to 15, more or less, without removing them from their school environment. There are students with, oh, sorry, with special educational needs, and their exceptional skills cannot be easily developed in the context of the regulated school system because uh, they have to respond to a wide variety, variety of learners. Two important aspects of the program are the age range and the method. The, the, the age group from 13, 12 to 13, when they start, has been considered the most appropriate for different reasons. It is more or less the time of the awakening of formal reasoning. In addition, experience in other countries have, have guided us involved work with children of these ages. The method, the method, this stimulation and guidance is done continuously. I mean, not merely by specific events such as competitions, but by means of a steady line of activities during all the year. Later, we talk about it in more detail. Now, how does this work? Well, we could say that uh, Stalmat has three stages every year, the preparation process, the selection process, and finally, the sessions, the main activity we can show. We consider that the selection process to be the, of prime importance. It is therefore a task that engages us for extensive time during the winter and spring of each, of each year. These are the steps that are taken. The project is in, around spring is announcing a publicity among students, teachers, and parents. The potential targets are the students that participate in local mathematical competitions, since different uh, regions of Spain have different local competition, information about the project is distributed among these, st these students. Sorry. Also, the math, the, math, the math teachers working in all primary and secondary schools of the region are informed of the project, usually by mail. Uh, we want to... In that, we asking them to encourage the best student to take part in the selection process. We believe that teachers of elementary and secondary school must play an important role in identifying gifted students. Parents 
are also brought in the, into the process uh, through the web, mail, etc. Similar. Uh, it's important that to participate in the selection process, a, a student must be recommended by his or by or her math teacher and entered by his or her parents. The period for the, reg for the reg registration is, the, is May, and in the second week of June, we uh, make the text. Now, in the selection process, the second stage, the students must show their mathematical skill by working on several problems posed to them. One of the most important aspects to keep in mind is that the goal is not to assess the mathematical knowledge, but the mathematical potential. For us, it's very important this, this point. Once the mathematical skills are evaluated and the first round candidates have been chosen, separate interviews are held with the finalists and their parents to evaluate the passion for participating in the program and the willingness of the parents to make the sacrifices it requires. Because they have in, in Granada, in the, in the case of Andalusia, uh, parents have to drive them from more than uh, 100 kilometers. Although the project involves no cost to the children families, parents do have to, will, to be willing to commit to making the effort several efforts. Let's, about the problems in the test, a few words. The candidates are given from four to six problems to work on. Since our intention is to make sure that these are original problems to make it impossible for the student to prepare for the exam, we are constantly on the lookout for problems through the year. The problems the candidate are asked to solve must be written in clear language. It is important to ensure that the difficult does not lie in the language used to describe the problem. The problem I designed to deal with several aspects of reasoning, visual thinking, logical reasoning, intuition, creativity, geometrical skill, etc. The question poses in each problem move progressively from less to more difficult. The idea is for all the candidates to be capable of answering at least part of the problem, but only those showing mathematical talent will be able to answer the higher level questions. The date, and, uh, the date at the problem of the test is almost the, the same on, in, on, uh, in, in Spain. We fix uh, the date in the second, the second uh, Saturday of, of, the, of June, generally. The main activity of the project with these children lasts for two years. Twice, twice or three times a week, the students participate in three hours of activities totally removed from the content of their syllabus at the school. It's very important. Totally removed from them. The main goal of these activities is to create the appropriate condition to, de to develop the student's mathematical creativity. Whether the sessions are dedicated to explaining advanced mathematical topics or to discovering relevant results in mathematics, there is always an abundance, an abundance of challenging, challenging problems to work on. In preparing these activities, we use our own expertise and a wide range of literature. We can mention the book Mathematical Circles. When Presenting well-established mathematical subject to these students, a short introduction is made by the teacher and activities are proposed to guide them through the main concepts of the session and to encourage them to discover results. During this part, the student works in groups, proposing ideas and solutions that must be discussed with their teammates. teammates. These ideas and solutions are finally collected 
and develop under the guidance of the teacher who comments about them and ask the student to defend their points of view. In other questions, the, the teacher starts with by presenting a problem, which in principle could be quite complex, and asks the student to provide solution in the particular cases, or to simplify the problem to try to seek a solution. For example, we can mention the, uh, the concept of the overbooking by airlines, the seven brides of Conningbergs, the office problem, etc. Sometimes the, pro the project proposed is completed, but most often it is not, leaving questions unanswered for the interest of the students to pursue. At this point, it is important to mention that there, there are no homework assignments for the students between sessions. Since we don't want the student to be distracted from the school students. Where other important subjects for the development are exploded. With the, with the Stalmat uh, activity, we try to provide a place to experiment and the freedom to play with concepts and to discuss ideas that blossom from the ability of the students selected to ask interesting questions. So now, some questions, some words about uh, the, the program in Andalusia. Regarding Andalusia, activities are held in Sevilla and in Granada. The program runs in collaboration with the Sociedad Andaluza of the Educación Matemática, Tales, the Andalusian and the All Andalusian Universities. There are 70 of us from primary school, secondary school, and almost all the University of Andalusia. Last year, around 600 students made the test. And the, we have, in Andalusia, we have an international summer school of mathematics. Every two years, since uh, 2014, uh, in joining with uh, St. Peters Petersburg University. As we mentioned, the sponsors are the Sociedad Matemática, the Professor Stales, the Spanish Foundation for Science and Technology, the Regional Government of Andalusia, the Universities of Andalusia, and some Mathematica Institute of Sevilla, IMUS, and Granada. Also, some companies like Casio gave the students some calculators. Uh, we finished the, our presentation with uh, awards of Miguel de Guzman. Stalmat is an encouraging experience, a gateway to a world of games and mathematical activities with a deep educational value of great interest to society and a delightful experience for all of us who participate in it. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for the uh, very interesting um, uh, project related to a very, very important subject as uh, mathematics. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's move uh, to the next um, speaker. Uh, as I said uh, in the previous presentation, we will have time for any questions that uh, you may have uh, at the end of the presentation. So the our next uh, speaker um, is uh, Simona Ale Ale Alexinaite and Simona Sashunaite from Vilnius University. And they are going to present uh, the project, Volunteering Project Guiding Start. Very promising title, Guiding Start. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you will uh, do your presentation in 10 minutes, if I am right. So yes. whenever you want, the floor is yours. Uh, so thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, OK, we can start. So uh, my name is Simona, uh, and I am volunteer uh, coordinator uh, of Vilnius University. So today, together with another Simona, <laughs> uh, we would like to present uh, our volunteering project, uh, Guiding Star. So 
Uh, but first, uh, I would like to talk about um, our volunteer center. Uh, volunteering in 2018 become uh, one of uh, priority and promoted direction of uh, Vilnius University strategy. So now we uh, coordinate internal, external, uh, short term and long term uh, volunteering uh, activities. Uh, we communicate with partners in Lithuania and abroad, and we work with people uh, who are experiencing uh, social uh, exclusion. For example, uh, we have volunteers uh, who help students with disabilities. Uh, we work with children who are now living in refugees uh, and migrant centers. Uh, and we have uh, many volunteers who help uh, children with uh, behavioral problems. Uh, so now we can start talking about uh, uh, our project, uh, Guiding Star, uh, which uh, operates in Vilnius, Konas and, and Shule. Uh, this project is based uh, on the individual long-term uh, stable friendship between a child and a volunteer, uh, Vilnius University, uh, students uh, devote part of their uh, time to pupils uh, from 9 to 12 years old uh, who currently um, experiencing communication or behavioral uh, difficulties or uh, have difficulty engage in community life. Uh, students and children do homework together, uh, spend their free time, communicate uh, in an informal environment. Uh, but uh, I know uh, another Simona who has a little friend named Kipras who will tell you about it later. Uh, so uh, now uh, I want to present the structure. Uh, of our uh, project. Uh, first, uh, we uh, invite Vilnius, Konas and Chuli schools uh, to cooperate uh, with us and uh, identify uh, children who need help of volunteers. Uh, the main uh, problems uh, faced by the children uh, involved in our project uh, are bullying at school, uh, lack of motivation to learn, loneliness, and, and so on. Uh, then uh, we invite uh, students to uh, fill the application form and participate in a motivational interview. Um, in the interview, uh, we get to know each other better, uh, volunteers uh, talk about volunteering experience, uh, I present what problems uh, our, our children have, uh, we discuss uh, with students about uh, volunteering possibilities, and um, after uh, interview, uh, we invite uh, students to volunteering training uh, in which we talk about uh, volunteering values, how not to lose uh, motivation during year. And uh, we present uh, psychological difficulties faced by children of this, uh, this age. After training, students always have uh, opportunity to contact uh, with our uh, psychologist. And uh, then, uh next okay thank you and then um uh, students uh, signed a contract and uh, volunteer for the least two hours a week for one uh, academic uh, year and uh, now we will have uh, the main part of our presentation uh simona will share here friendship with Kipras. So. Hello everyone, my name is Rolf Simona. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be there. Uh, and today I will share my experience in volunteering project Guiding Star from volunteer and curator of uh, Volunteers View. I came to this project last year, uh, I would like to say accidentally and without any preparation. I was in the second bachelor studies of uh, neurobiophysics 
where uh, a lot of biology, chemistry, physics, IT, and nothing related to children. In general, I have only one uh, sister, no cousins, no, uh, no child, uh, children in uh, my surroundings. So I didn't have any experience how to communicate with kids. After a uh, long uh, deliberation, I accepted the huge for me uh, guiding star uh, challenge to uh, get in a relationship with a child who experiencing be, uh, communication or behavioral uh, difficulties. And uh, it was fun. It, I had a very beautiful relationship with Kipras. So that's my history of how I came to, into Guiding Star. And now I will tell uh, uh, about the volunteering and Guiding Star in more details. So when I decided to become a volunteer, first of all, I had a motivational interview with the voluntary activities coordinator Simona, the previous speaker. Uh, we talked about my personal uh, qualities and uh, what child I would like to get. After that, I and uh, the other volunteers had a very strong training. During them, we knew what problems could be faced um, and how to solve them, what is our responsibilities as uh, volunteers, how to organize the first meeting uh, with a child, and uh, understood the most important uh, idea in this project, we become friend uh, uh, for child, child, not for her, uh, his uh, parents or teachers. In this photo, you see our volunteer, uh, volunteer, volunteers command. Uh, volunteers in this project get training. Curator, what do curators I will talk about later. And a volunteer get psychologist consultation during all volunteering whenever he needs. So let's move to personal child and volunteer meetings, which is the most important part of this project. Here you can see how and my, uh, my and my little friend Kipras uh, meetings uh, had, have been organized about because of COVID-19 pandemic. We had uh, uh, 25 online meetings during, uh, during them. We played computer games. Uh, talked about Lego collection, uh, shared how we spend our leisure time with family, and uh, hoped that the quarantine would end soon. Uh, we first met physically after four months, and all, all over the year we had six contact meetings. Um, both of us uh, uh, are passionate about the active leisure, so uh, when we meet uh, um, we were riding uh, bicycles, uh, electric scooters, uh, roller skates, or sleeping off the hill in the winter. Without personal meetings with the children, it is being organized some activities for all the project participants. Uh, one of them uh, here in the photos, uh, we did some chemistry experiments at the uh, faculty, Vilnius University Faculty of uh, Chemistry and uh, Geosciences. Uh, one of them, it's a golden rain experiment. Um, it's reminiscent of the name of our project, so uh, it left a big impression on the kids. After some educational part, we always have uh, a part of games, small talks with the tea and sweets in uh, our hands. We curators and volunteers also organize uh, events for project participants. In uh, the last year, uh, when was a lockdown in Lithuania, we organized a one month long uh, final event for children and volunteers. Uh, pairs, I mean a volunteer and a child, and did a little project about uh, any beautiful place in Lithuania, watched the film Zootopia um, with, with snacks in hands all together in Zoom call, um, and uh, had a quiz about that film and did some other tasks for which uh, children get, got points. And of course, these points were converted to prizes. The events before COVID-19 pandemia was quite different. A program with invited guests, uh, uh, tramp lines or and other active activities was being prepared. In the final event, uh, volunteer and child say goodbye to each other. I'd, I would like now to move to, on the curator role in this project. Um, curators are leaders of a small group uh, from five to six volunteers. 
they share with the volunteers information about events uh, or consultations and other beneficial information. Um, or organize monthly group meetings, follow the way of relationship development of each pair. As volunteers have support from curators, uh, curators have uh, a mentorship from a voluntary activities coordinator. Um, they also have introductory training and psychologist uh, consultations if there is a need to have. Uh, during last year at the Guiding Star project, I felt very strong support from my uh, curator. So this year I decided to become a curator of volunteers too. In the introductory training, curators learn how to manage group, how to maintain volunteers motivation, uh, because not all relationships are successful. Um, for example, sometimes children like to study to students so that they are under home arrest and they can't uh, uh, meet, uh, but they just do not want to meet with a volunteer. Um, so in this cases, volunteers get support from curator. We discuss uh, this problem, how to solve it, and uh, psychologist uh, consultations. Um, so after introductory training lectures, a new group of curators have a team building activity. Uh, this year, we traveled across Lithuania in the university um, training base uh, in uh, Lithuania National Park, uh, had lectures there. And after that, we were kayaking and enjoying autumn sun. There you can see some moments from this month, uh, me and my group meeting. Uh, during uh, uh, them, we uh, during group meetings, we share personal experience and communicating with the little friends. Um, and we are looking for a solution to problems we met. Uh, for example, Saturday, we discussed uh, that Luca is a very shy girl and do not want to, to take photos. Um, the photos uh, are needed to get points for attending museums, uh, theaters, planetariums, uh, botanical gardens and other places to visit. So if there is no uh, photo, there is no points uh, for prizes. So uh, if, so we came up with uh, allowing the girl uh, not to take a picture of her face, but um, take, picture, uh, take picture in which uh, uh, the hands uh, are seen, that can be seen. So. Uh, and uh, what uh, happened <laughs> yesterday, my volunteer sent this photo uh, where, uh, where uh, the Luca is uh, showing her face. And um, I'm very happy when I see changes in, in children like this, when they overcome uh, their shyness or, or another problem. So as volunteers have meetings uh, with their curator, Curators also have monthly groups, uh, uh, monthly meetings with the voluntary, uh, voluntary activities coordinator, Simona. Uh, during them, we plan activities, create events uh, for project participants, share how we and our volunteers are doing and uh, look for solution to problems. Uh, well, that is all I have for today. Finally, I would like to highlight one key idea of the Guiding Star project. Uh, children who hardly integrate into society um, become friends with the volunteers, uh, step by step opening their hearts uh, for the surrounding world. Child and volunteer become a guiding star for each other and the Vilnius University is a place where their uh, friendship and personal development journey starts. So thank you for attention. Yeah, and uh, and I want to say uh, this photo was uh, sent by a, a teacher from one school. Uh, she said it happened uh, when I asked uh, who wants to be in the guiding star. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Uh, I really love the name that you chose for for the project. Uh, it's a very challenging project because of the, the profile of your target uh, children, but at the same time, really, really beautiful. So thank you for sharing the, the project with us. So ne uh, our next uh, speaker comes from a uh, University of Padua, 
Nicola Carrara, curator of the Anthropologica Fresh Museum of the University of Padua. And um, it's go she's going to present the project, the educational offer of CAM or CAM for children before and after COVID-19 um, pandemic. So Nicola Carrara, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I share my presentation. So, uh, as, uh, as you said, uh, my speech will be about the educational offer of CAEM for children before and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it's better to say before and during COVID-19 pandemic. I start with a brief uh, presentation of uh, the, the CAEM, the museum and the collection at the University of Padua. We have 13 museum and 16 museum collection, uh, more or less 1 million items. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, many deep, uh, disciplines represented in our museums. So what are uh, our main activities? Obviously they are relating to our collection, cataloging and managing, conservation, uh, research on the collection. This is very important for uh, university museums. And of course, we uh, try to give assistance to the scholar and we participated to in, in interdisciplinary, inter interdisciplinary project. But the focus of my speech will be about the, the dissemination, in particular didactics and guided visits. So uh, some example before the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, as for example, the Museum of Geology and Paleontology offered uh, exciting programs, events, and educational research for learners of, of age, in particular children, children and families. And as you can see in this picture, these uh, events could be in the classrooms or could be visit at the museum or uh, a mix of laboratories and visit, uh, as you can see in this picture. Another example could be uh, the one um, at the Museum of Archaeological Science and Arts that was available to the university audience, but also to a general public. And uh, um, for children, uh, they have a, a special thematic itineraries and labs. And uh, this is very important uh, in, in the university. They try to uh, give importance to the direct experience with the material, in particular, uh, at the University of Archaeology, stories from the past. As you can see in this picture, for example, try to explain how uh, Romans live in the ancient uh, Roman time. Or also here, some examples for the writing in the past, also at the museum. And uh, other example here, very interesting in my opinion, because it's a, a, a clear case of what, what happened in, in our university. Uh, we started from a research project. This is related to a pamphlet from the ancient uh, Egypt. And the, res the results of our project became a, a dissemination. In particular, this uh, laboratory was proposed to um, children and is uh, important because all the senses are involved. See, touch, and listen to the music and also smell. Very interesting in my opinion. Here are other examples from the Giovanni Polleni Museum, uh, the Museum of Theory of Physics, that offer a special guided visits for primary school and they focus only on few instruments. For children it's particularly important to focus only on few uh, instruments presenting their history and position along the timeline. The concept of time is very important to be met at this age. And uh, they show how they, the instrument works. And you can see in this picture, the, the working with the timeline or how the uh, instruments work with the, these experiments. Also the Museum of Zoology offered uh, guided visits uh, coupled with following the activities, the following activities in the mini labs uh, are related to the butterflies, uh, microcosmo discovery, animal clothes, uh, bones. But also there are another interesting uh, offer at the museum. 
they go to uh, school they, uh, with this activity, the museum in a sweet case, in this uh, purple sweet case, there are um, some items of the museum and uh, they come, um, the educators go uh, to, the, um, to the schools in the classroom to explain uh, many concepts related to zoology and then the, 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 the classroom, the, can, uh, the class can go to the museum in, in, in following time. And uh, this is a strange case uh, related to our uh, university. Uh, re uh, one example immediately before the, the pandemic, and this uh, the, related to the Museum of Geography, that in, it, they presented a new setup and have the inauguration the December the 3rd in, 20, in 2019. Uh, more than 5,000 students were expected for, guided by visits in the following months but something happened and we know what uh, this strange case became uh, uh, inter an interesting uh, article uh, the title is opened and immediately closed uh, because this is what happened here at the museum of geography and uh, the, the second part of the title uh, i will speak about in the next few uh, moments because it's something that uh, to all the museum. So what happened? COVID-19 has changed our life clearly and also uh, our day life. So I resume here the main uh, facts of in, in Italy. Uh, I think it is more or less the same in Europe uh, with different times, but more or less the same. So we have uh, the first wave in, uh, in March 2020 the lockdown from uh, March the 9th to uh, May the 3rd. Then we have a easing of containment measurement. And then uh, the following phase was a, a coexistence with the COVID. Then we have a second wave in the, in, in the autumn uh, 2020 and the few uh, in the first months of 2021 with the new restrictive measures or containment for different scenarios because the situation in Italy is different from where uh, was different um, among the regions. Then uh, in, uh, in 2020, another wave, the third wave with the tightening of containment measure in the, in the spring and easy of containment measure and the introduction of green pass uh, in, um, since uh, uh, the April the 65th. So what, what has changed is during uh, uh, 2020, especially in the first month, the, the, the months of uh, the lockdown, there was a paradigm shift uh, related to the gym. We moved from the present, the physical presence to the virtual presence. We moved to the web. So the center, the CAM produced many uh, researchers, particularly for kids and families, there are games, uh, there are um, videos, there are um, uh, workshops, many, many. So uh, I show some examples here. Uh, for example, this uh, was proposed by the Museum of uh, uh, Zoology in the, during the time of Advent, a sort of Advent calendar uh, in which um, were presented all um, a sort of identity card for uh, each animal of the, 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 the museum. Uh, here you can see the tiger or other activities. This, is, was, this was proposed by the Museum of Paleontology, waiting for Befana. Befana is the Italian word for epiphany with a, a workshop uh, made with, uh, with Zoom and the construction of a, a Mammoth with the ch children, and uh, also uh, this was uh, an interesting proposed by uh, the Museum of Zoology and Museum of Geology and Paleontology, focus on the difference between the living and the past race. Or here are examples for the Museum of uh, Archaeological Sciences and Arts uh, with the reconstruction of mosaics. Or this uh, experiment, this social experiment, in my opinion, very, very interesting, 
uh, proposed by the Museum of Geography. The Italian title is uh, La Mia Mente Viaggia. In English, we can, the translation is My Mind Travels. That is a virtual trip made by different images uh, sent to the museum uh, in the some data to the experiment, 100 post images from uh, 15 Italian regions and uh, from 13, five nations, and also one from Mars, very interesting, and 158,000 followers, very interesting. This virtual uh, trip made during the lockdown when our body are closed in our home, but our mind could, uh, uh, all in the in uh, in the space. Uh, as I said before, something changes after the introduction of the Green Pass in Italy, and uh, we start again with the visit. Obviously, we have some limitation. Uh, for example, at the the Museum of Zoology, maximum six customers at a time. So we have family or uh, kids, a little group, a uh, small group of kids. Here are the examples from the museum of uh, the Giovanni Museo, Giovanni Polleni Museum lecture demonstration. Uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, uh, small groups of children. Uh, uh, what has changed in, uh, in the last few months? I resume here, uh, the pros in, uh, in green and uh, the, the cons in, uh, in red. So, in my opinion, the capacity of the spaces, now we have the possibility to um, host uh, uh, the center for 100% uh, of uh, the possibility because we, uh, the introduction of Green Pass permit this. But in the past, we have a uh, hard limitation that forced the museum to host group of up 10 students maximum. And, uh, from one hand, this was intended for group of home scholars, home scholars, but uh, on the other hand, uh, this forced to divide larger class, and this is something uh, discouraging and preventing visiting presence. It was a problem during in the past. Uh, as I said, during that period, we create a lot of proposal. Uh, to be carried out remotely by, by web. And this production was very uh, intensive during the pandemic. And, there was, and uh, that was the only possibility during that time. But today we have a great heritage that allow us to offer experience to uh, even to classes that uh, uh, study in the town very far from Padua. So it's a great heritage now. This is, in my opinion, one of the most critical uh, points in the future because uh, uh, we, in the past, we proposed many uh, workshop laboratories with direct experiences of contact and experimentation with our materials. Now it can't be done for health region. And I don't know what happened in the future. I think we have to rethink about this uh, proposals in the future. And uh, this is important because uh, another pros, in my opinion, uh, during, especially during the lockdown period, uh, all the staff were involved in production of audiovisual materials. So we have a, a great uh, heritage, as I said, but also I think we have learned how to use this, this way of communication. Uh, as you can say by the graphic of uh, my slides, we are living in Padua, an important uh, anniversary. Uh, in the next year, we celebrate in the 800, uh, 800 years of, uh, from our foundation and uh, many events related to museum, other challenges at the university. So uh, we start uh, in uh, 
September 1st in 2021 20, with the, the inauguration, with the new setup of the Giovanni Polani Museum, the Museum of History of Physics. Uh, physics. Uh, other uh, future, other work in progress are related to the Botanical Museum Herbarium that is not closed to the public. Uh, and we hope to uh, have an, uh, an inauguration spring summer 2022. And also uh, with another big project, great project, the Museum of Nature and Man, as you can see in this picture, work in progress. Uh, uh, really, uh, that will be open in the autumn with uh, winter 2022. We hope that is uh, that it will be a, um, a museum uh, that join together four museums: anthropology, mineralogy, geology, and paleontology and zoology. So, all these museums uh, are to, uh, nowadays closed, but we hope in the future, maybe in, in the next year, to reopen uh, to the public, and especially uh, we expect children as, uh, in class at, uh, that visit that museum. Thanks for your attention. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Nicola, for um, the very interesting um, presentation. I think uh, this project is a fantastic example of uh, how pandemic or lockdown has uh, brought a promising initiative that can be maintained over time, not just uh, for a specific time, but over time. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, let's move to our uh, next project. Let, now let's focus on music. Uh, we have talked about different uh, subjects. Now we're going to focus on uh, music. And um, the project, the title of the project is Music as a Resource to Promote Children and Young People's Participation in Society. And this uh, initiative is going to be presented by the Vigo Kruger, Associate Professor from the University of uh, Bergen. Um, Vigo, whenever you want, the floor is yours. So, thank you. Thank, and uh, again, thanks for uh, having me. <clears throat> I will uh, share my screen so that you can see the presentation. Can you see it now or? But yes, I, we can. I can see it. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, I have to change. Okay, now I can see it. Yes, um, thank you. and. Um, I just wanted to start by uh, <coughs> presenting a little bit of where I work and a little bit about myself. I work at the Grieg Academy Music Therapy Research Center in, um, in Bergen, located um, in, uh, in, the, in the west coast of Norway. I am the research uh, leader of this center and I just want to um, say that we are publishing two journals that you can look at if you want to the nordic journal of music therapy and voices and voices is an open access uh, journal which you can access very easily by going into voices.no and we have um, both quantitative and qualitative research projects and today I want to focus on uh, qualitative re research on um, the subject music to promote children's participation. Um, a little bit about myself. I um, started out being a musician in a band from Norway called Pogo Pops. And if you can see my shirt, I am a Beatles fan. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, our music in Pogo Pops is the Beatles influenced and uh, we had a successful uh, time in the 90s uh, where we won a Norwegian Grammy and we went to three tours in Japan. We are still playing once in a while but uh, this is just as a hobby for me now. 
But I'm mentioning this because music is a very important influence for myself and my um, interest in working with this as an academic uh, field. Um, I don't know how much you know about music therapy. I guess you don't know too much. Uh, so the, the heads I can see are uh, saying me that you don't know too much. So I will just give a very brief um, introduction to what music therapy is and the type of music therapy that we are focusing at uh, in Gamut. Uh, music therapy, in short, is a way to promote people's health and well-being. And the traditional music therapy way of working is this uh, kind of individual-based therapist-client relationship. In, no in Norway, and especially in Bergen, we are focusing on a type of music therapy called community music therapy. And community music therapy can be described as a human rights-based practice where we use music to mobilize resources. For example, in, in, in order to, to attend to unheard voices, for example, in a child welfare context, and we are um, creating practices where social identities can be created. And that can be very important, for example, if children have a negative identity, for example, being um, living under poverty or have other so social problems. To show you what music therapy can be, I want to show you a little clip and hopefully this clip will uh, get to you. I will try on YouTube. Can you see uh, see this? Can you yes. hear the sound? Yes, we can. I can't hear the sound, but I can see it. En vanlig 16-åring som har upplevt mer än han burde. Det är er 2 år sedan han flyktade från Syria. Han var livrädd för att någon av parterna i krigen skulle hämta han och göra han till barnesoldat. Vi säger till föräldrarna att vi ska ta dig på ett sted som är inte krig, men vi bara lyger. Vi lär dig först ingenting, så vi tar dig rätt in i krigen. Så jag vill inte dö, jag vill inte träffa folk. Och det var den största och största grunden som mot dig tänker att nu må jag grejt så nu är det nog. This clip is about a young person who has fled from Syria. It is a clip that has been showed in Norwegian broadcast um, channel called TV2. And he is talking about how he has used music to create a identity as a person who has resources and has something to say in the Norwegian community. Men Sharvan's family was there in Aleppo, and he came to Norge helt alone. Det var så annorledes, för det, för det är inte min språk. Så måste jag lära mig först norsk och så efter det så började jag skriva texter. He also say that he has used music to learn the, the Norwegian language and to start writing his own songs. Han har brukt musikterapi till att skriva sina egna sanger, till att lage texter som handlar om livet hans. Jag är er så lei av krigen. I to år har Sharvan vært ute av familien sin, men for bare noen veker siden kom tvillingssøstra og mora endelig til Norge. No. This clip is showing that Sharvan uh, is having a family, uh, family reunion and he is inviting his family to a concert that he will present his music on. Nu har han inviterat dig till konsert och detta är er en stor kväll. Det är första konserten som ni ska höra på mig och vara med mig. Så jag är er väldigt inne med en massa känslor så den gången är er ju äkta familjen min så det är er en mer för energi till att visa dig ja här är er drama. It's very emotional emotional for him and he is looking very much forward for this presentation. So Vi har 
är stolt över dem, men eh, i kväll så är det som att jag är mer stolt. <laughs> So that was just a little glimpse into what uh, community music therapy can uh, be. And uh, to move on, in, in music therapy we are occupied with what music actually is. And is music always good or healthy? Uh, it can be argued that music can be good and healthy but not necessarily always for example there are examples of um, music being used in activities of war and torture where music is uh, being used to um, to make people feel pain and, um, and it's not necessarily so that if you use music good outcomes will will be um, a background for using music is uh, taken from neurology where we find studies on how music function on the brain and a um, popular way of thinking nowadays is that music is coordinating the various uh, parts of the brain so that if you are for example playing the violin such, such as this person on the picture here um, the parts in the brain are being connected to each other and some people go so far to say that the brain is actually dancing when you play the violin and that is interesting because if you for example have difficulties in language uh, maths or other school activities music can be used to <coughs> get access to the parts of the brain that you don't get access to otherwise there are numerous of studies and literature on this and we are using this as a background to argue why we should for example have music in schools in child welfare or mental health an important um, background is also uh, looking at the UN Child Convention, which uh, I understand people here today are familiar with. And uh, a popular way of looking at the Child Convention is to, is to divide the 54 articles into the three P's, known as provision, protection and participation. And we like to think that music therapy is capable to to work with all the three P's. If you for example um, take this um, picture into consideration this young man is provided with the necessary equipment to play music. He has his guitar amplifier wire and he also has his cool clothes. Then he can participate in the very popular activity of playing music, for example in a band or so on. And taking that together we can argue that this young man is protected against various difficulties and problems in the society. We know for example that cultural participation promotes the well-being of young people it, and it also is preventive towards hindering that young people get into to difficulties such as criminality, drugs and uh, mental health problems. In Norway we are pretty good at provision and protection. We like to think that. Uh, Norway is a rich country, uh, relatively speaking and most people have what they need and they are mostly protected against uh, difficulties and, and dangers but the problem here is participation how do we work with participation and how do we facilitate young people's voices so that they are actually being heard and taken into consideration in for example difficult decision making processes looking at this um, list here we we find that the human rights for children 
um, should be connected to a user level um, uh, le to, to a, a user level and the arrow here is put in to, to illustrate that participation is not something that can be considered only as a top-down process. Participation is something which happens when young people are invited to express themselves and to, to, um, to, to, um, to, to decide what will happen, for example, in a project. And some of you might be familiar with this uh, ladder of participation. And on the lower steps of this ladder, we find non-participation, such as tokenism, decoration and manipulation, which is uh, things that we should uh, step away from and, and not do. Unfortunately, these things happen all the time, for example, in school, and in child welfare, where we pretend that we take children's participation into consideration, but we actually do not really do that. The ideal for us would be to climb up to the upper steps of this ladder to invite children to be decision makers and to, to, uh, to decide what will, for example, happen with them when they enter a school situation or are in a child institution situation. Um, following the ideal of what we should do regarding children's participation, um, following Lundi from 2007, he promotes four elements of creating um, the possibilities for children's voice, space, voice, audience and influences. Uh, and I have put in a picture of a microphone here because I think that music therapy can be a way of, of uh, creating um, the, pre 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 the possibilities for, for, for children to being heard. And I have uh, also um, mentioned Greta Thunberg here, which is a very good example of what can happen if we actually let children speak and take them seriously. Um, so, to the research that we are doing at Gamut, I want to present some examples of what children actually say when they are asked about music's meanings. I have interviewed children who have taken part in a music workshop. This uh, is um, a picture of the music workshop. This is a, a room where you find instruments such as keyboard, drums, bass, guitar, but it can also be about music technology, uh, music production and music performance. The music workshop is a meeting place where young people meet to, to uh, be taught music, to get supervision, to do artwork, songwriting, but it is also a place where they can have pleasure and fun and to focus on the social aspects of using music. And also family, peers and so on are invited as participants at the, at the, conference, at the concert, just as you saw on this little video clip. The music therapist has various roles in this work. He is a pedagogue, a therapist, a supervisor, a leader, a participant playing music, an organizer and a researcher as well. Um, and if we look at the, the quotes from a, um, a research paper that we published some years ago, taking from a child welfare institution setting. Um, the children are uh, informing us that participation is very difficult for them. This uh, child says that when I first came into the child welfare institution, I lost my independence. 
The adults told me I was not old enough to think for myself or to make decisions concerning my own life situation. It was a very bad feeling losing control over my own life. I think it's the worst I have ever experienced. It is a feeling I never want to feel again. This quote reminds us of what happens when children are in lack of participation. A very serious uh, state of being and we should not um, uh, let this be the, the ideal. This is kind of on the lower lowest step on the on the ladder of participation. Um, when music comes into question they are uh, optimistic and tell us something about music's possibility. This person tells us that um, driving in a car and listening to music with an adult person is a possibility to create a dialogue. Me and the name of the music therapist, we heard a lot of music in the car. We listened to Nirvana and those kinds of bands. We used many hours just talking about things and talking through things really helped me at the time. It was through the conversations that I first was introduced to music therapy. Um, music and identity is very close related and we have a lot of uh, studies and, and literature on that, both from Norway but also internationally. This uh, young person tells us that I had a special song that I listened to when I was at home with my mom. When we argued, I could turn up and sing along, to my mother, to my father. That song represented for me a kind of don't blame it all on me feeling. I had a song for each occasion. I had a song, I had songs that helped me when I was down and hated myself. And I guess that the listeners here today can uh, agree that music helps us create um, coherence and a sense of meaning in everyday life. And this is the kind of uh, material that we are working on with music therapy that music and narratives are very closely linked together um, to help young people um, cope with everyday li life problems music can be a, um, a door or a link to kind of get into very important and meaningful conversations this quote is about uh, what happens when young people uh, um, excuse me uh, Vigo Kruger uh, we have we are out of uh, time so okay one minute left if one you minute. can please I will just move to the conclusion then and say that uh, following a, a child convention perspective all children have the right to engage in cultural activities participation in cultural cultural activities may be healthy but not necessarily healthy so we need some information and knowledge on how to work with that when we do protective measures they are very closely connected to participatory measures and music holds possibility to work with both biologically cultural historically and globally situated phenomena and there is a gap between rights and realities and this gap needs to be filled with measures and um, we can look at music therapy as a way of working with both formal and informal measures. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, the presentation. It's a very interesting project. As you said, music is a language um, that can uh, help us to, to communicate. So really, really important topic. And now um, let's move to our uh, last uh, speaker, um, Senior Advisor um, Bente Otvey Krosoy from University of, Ge of Bergen, who is going to present the project Annual Children's Conference at the University. Bente Otvey, go ahead, please. Thank you very much. So I will also share my uh, presentation. 
Um, okay. My name is uh, Bente Krasse and I work uh, as uh, the head of the event office at the University of Bergen. That means that I normally work mostly with organizing events. Uh, and that uh, these events are mostly um, uh, in institutional events uh, for the top management at the University of Bergen because we work at the, the rector and the university director's office. And one of these um, uh, events that we kind of have a very uh, close uh, ownership till it's the annual children's uh, university. Um, I will talk about how we uh, organize it. And I will also talk about uh, uh, say a little bit about why it is important for the University of Bergen. Um, the annual uh, university uh, uh, for children. No, sorry. What did I do now? Excuse me. I have to go uh, back. The an annual children's university have we been organizing since uh, 2015. Um, then we uh, 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 opened uh, a brand new university aula uh, uh, and we, we made this opportunity to, to start up with the annual uh, children's conference, which uh, then was a brand new idea for us. Uh, we recruit children from uh, primary schools in, uh, in Bergen County. Uh, and we in invite about 250 children uh, every year uh, in the age of uh, 11 or 12 years old from the sixth grade uh, to come one day in, uh, in each September. Uh, we have a very uh, simple or easy structure uh, and we do, do it the same way uh, over and over again. Uh, we have... Uh, four subjects, four uh, uh, researchers from four faculties. University of Bergen have um, uh, eight faculties all together, including uh, our museum. Uh, so uh, we invite researchers from four faculties uh, one year and from the next four faculties the next year. And then we move back to uh, the first four again. Um, we tried uh, to have an overall theme for the university, uh, uh, the children's university, uh, but uh, we figured out that that was actually not necessary. So uh, what we do now is to, um, uh, uh, we go through the management. Uh, we ask uh, uh, the deans to to pick pick out uh, or suggest um, a good researcher for for this year's uh, children's university, uh, and we want them to um, uh, pick out researchers who are, for example, very good in communication uh, with this group. Um, the four um, employees that we recruit uh, do have to, to prepare some questions for the, the children so they can discuss these questions in the classroom before they uh, uh, come to the children's university this day. Um, and then we try to, uh, to, to make everything um, uh, look like you know an, uh, a real conference, like you know the we adult, uh, adults adults uh, uh, participants uh, participant um, participate in, um, and uh, we they all uh, have to register and they they get this name tag, and uh, they get their program on the name tag, and everything is like. Uh, uh, at an ordinary conference. Uh, 
Um, it is a short day uh, because we know that all uh, all the children uh, uh, first have to to um, meet up at school. Then they uh, come to the university uh, all together, and they are also going back to the school before they go home. So uh, uh, the time frame is it's only it's actually only three hours from t ten to to one. Um, and because uh, because this is uh, a very important event for from the university side, uh, both rector and prorector are present in ceremonial uh, gowns. Uh, this is the program uh, this year. This year's program. Uh, we always have a moderator who is. Um, famous. Uh, she will be recruited from uh, maybe a famous uh, pro head of uh, program of uh, from children's uh, television. Uh, our pro-rector um, will always um, welcome the children. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, four lectures. And this year uh, we had uh, Kiki from the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science. She was talking about paleontology. Uh, you just met uh, Viggo, uh, who talked about music as a resource to promote children and young people's participation in society. Um, we um, have a short lunch break. Uh, before uh, all the children are back again in the University Aula. And uh, this year, uh, uh, Ellen was talking then about gaming and physical activity uh, if, and asked if something changed during Corona. And in the end, uh, we had Cecil from the Faculty of Humanities who asked the question, can you play with religion? And in the end, uh, our rector herself, brand new this year, uh, came to award um, uh, the diplomas that all the children can uh, bring home that day. So here we just uh, see some pictures. Here is uh, Selda, our moderator. She is actually a, a, a alumni from the University of Bergen. She has a master in uh, physics. And she is uh, very popular. And this is the second year she uh, she moderates uh, this conference uh, for us. And she loves uh, doing some experiments between the, the lectures. Um, and this is Kiki about uh, pantheology, uh, which is also very popular. Um, the children loves uh, asking questions. And uh, it's uh, when the children are 11, uh, between 11 and 12, they are still very open-minded uh, and, and fight about uh, uh, asking uh, questions. There is it's a competition. Here is Vigo. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, and the last one. And here you can see a rector. I would love uh, sharing pictures of uh, uh, the children, but uh, uh, since we are not supposed to expose the children, I will not do that. Uh, but uh, it's all also very popular when the uh, rector is arriving and going up the aisle with the, the gown. The children are always um, sharing it. And it's like they are really appreciating that uh, rector uh, is taking the time to come and uh, in the, the gown. Uh, and uh, yeah. Um, this is my last slide. And uh, this is uh, a picture from, uh, it is actually our former uh, uh, rector uh, from the very first uh, annual conference from 2015. So you can see walking up the aisle, very popular and high five. Um, 
There are several um, reasons uh, um, uh, that we organize this event annually. Uh, we want to present fresh research-based knowledge uh, to the children directly from our researchers. Uh, we want to participate. Uh, uh, we want to be um, uh, have to be, to be aware about this early recruitment and uh, to be a part of uh, an awakening process uh, among young children. We want to, to make the university available for all parts of society um, because it's democratic, it's inclusive, uh, and it is a diversity. Um, we want, uh, it's a fact that still uh, there is a lot of children who, uh, who will never attend university because their parents didn't and their grandparents didn't. Uh, so it's easy, it's very important to, to reach out uh, early. And communication and uh, dissemination of uh, knowledge uh, is a part of the, the university's, uh, the university task. Um, and also uh, to do research available, not only for, uh, to society, but uh, maybe uh, especially uh, towards the, the young people. Uh, so uh, we also want uh, our researchers uh, to get also get used to uh, communicate with uh, with this with this group uh, of children. So that is what I had. So thank you so much. And I will stop sharing. Thank you so much, uh, Bente, for the for the presentation. Oh, it's great to uh, be able to attend a conference since a very early age uh, to take advantage of the knowledge and research that is shared. You no, know, in a conference, we already know how important conferences are. So it's very very nice uh, project. So, okay, now it's time for, for questions. So is there any questions that uh, you want to ask um, um, related to the five different projects that have been presented in the morning? I'm sure all of them are very interesting. So I'm sure you, you will have questions about them. Uh, sorry, can I ask a question about Estalmat? Uh, for sure. So, please, uh, Giovanna? Yes. Go ahead. So, I'm from Padova and uh, I run also a math circle. So, I'm really glad to know that some partners are doing something similar. So, I wanted to ask them something about the female participation to the oh. program. <laughs> okay, that's a big question always in mathematics and the technology. Okay, the, the female participation in the selection process is around 30%, uh, 30, 35%. Uh, in contrast, the, uh, the, the selected females at the same percentage. The, the problem is in the they she they didn't they don't want to to make the test and we have to our effort is in in that they 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 didn't they don't want to present to to the test but they have a good the same result that the the male population. Any other question? No? Uh, okay. Uh, please, Dominic Beger, go ahead. Um, it's the same in the same direction, um, Senor Rodriguez. Um, um, the question is how, how do you bind your young talent to an academic career? I mean, this at this young age, um, there is a 
a lot of things which will happen and um, well if we do children's university it's for more general purpose than to further an academic career but i have heard that this is the the, the explicit goal um perhaps they can earn more money in the industry afterwards uh, is that uh, do we have any special strategy to kind of um Yes, to, to bind them to your to your to studies, to the research, to promote further their career. Do they have any diplomas which are renowned? Or I don't know what. Mm. You mean the the future of of that children? Yes, as I understood, you have uh, you you are discovering special mathematical talents yes. with the goal to further their academic future. Mm, what we mm, what we do is to to explore their creativity in order to mm, and of course the main goal for us is the mm, the mm, critical thinking not only in maths but on, on all the field of the of the science and humanities and and that's all. Uh, they uh, when they finish the the, the project uh, Stalmat, um, half of them more or less uh, study mathematics but not all not all of them study mathematics then we have a, a doctor me medicine we have a lawyers a lot of during um, the 20 years that uh, uh, the project so um, the, the the main goal the main where our effort is about the critical thinking some uh, two of them two of them i think i don't know one of them uh, works uh, at uh, the google company uh, from madrid and okay but all i can say <laughs> yes can i just uh, follow up with another question, or is this too much? Uh, I we still have time for uh, another. Okay. Um, so uh, I get the decide. We have inclusion as a topic. I uh, get the decided impression that these uh, children will come from academic backgrounds, mostly your teacher background. That would be the stereotype uh, that this is a kind of an elitist uh, project and or. Uh, or would you agree or do you have uh, plans like um, sub, uh, like special plans, special uh, stipends or uh, other uh, um, elements which further the participation of any kind of background, uh, social speaking, social speaking? Um, do you mean that Stalmat is an elitist project? I think... In I think the, there is not an elitist project. The, the children have some necessities mm -hmm. in the school, and we have to promote the, the creativity. The, even the, the, the project is uh, doesn't cost any money for the families. Mm -hmm. So we have to, to open the, the project to, to all the students. But if you mean uh, um, the idea of Miguel de Guzman was um, was this this was the, the idea of Miguel de Guzman uh, to attend the student with exceptional skills in mathematics. So in, in, we are open. Uh, we we also uh, give uh, talks in the in the schools in the schools for all. Um, for the, the student in order to, to for the, the, the beauty of the mathematics. But uh, we, we have not uh, focus on the, on the other, on other files of the, the science, only mathematics and only in this, this case, by the moment. Uh, so I, I think we don't have uh, time for uh, more questions. Um, I, I wanted to, 
to um, to congratulate everyone for the all the very interesting projects that you have shared uh, today in the webinar it was really really interesting um promising and i wish uh, you all uh, all the best of luck uh, to develop them thank you thank you so much for being here today um, looking forward for the next seminar thank you Belinda. thank you thank you so much thank you